On December 16, 1773, 44 tons of tea, worth 1.7 million in today's U.S. dollars, were hauled from the holds of the Dartmouth, Eleanor, and Beaver and tossed into Boston Harbor. Contrary to popular belief, the Tea Act of 1773 didn't raise taxes. It aimed to make the British East India Company tea more competitive, undercutting the popular Dutch smuggled variety. However, this economic maneuver backfired, igniting colonial resentment towards the British monopoly. While the image of tea chests plummeting into the depths of Boston Harbor is iconic, Historical accounts reveal that much of the tea remained afloat, requiring further destruction the next morning by determined colonists who rode out to break up the large clumps with oars. The Brig William, carrying 58 chests of tea, did not sail into Boston Harbor, but ran aground off Cape Cod. Its tea cargo was largely salvaged, eventually making it to Boston, where in August 1775, it was sold at public auction to eventually be drunk by Boston loyalists and British soldiers. Nothing was damaged or destroyed except the tea, and the protesters even swept the decks of the ships clean afterwards. British ships in Boston Harbor took no actions to stop the destruction of the tea. Included in the Dartmouth's cargo was poet Phyllis Wheatley's first published book, which had to be printed in England because colonists would not pay for a book by an enslaved woman. George Washington privately criticized the destruction of private property. Benjamin Franklin urged Boston to repay the East India Company for the destroyed tea. In March 1774, Bostonians dumped nearly 30 chests of tea from the fortune into the harbor. Philadelphia, New York, Charleston all joined the chorus of dissent, sending ships back to England and dumping tea into harbors. The Tea Party was, in fact, a broader movement against British policies, not just a single, isolated event. <laughs> 